Hey YouTube, welcome to another episode of the uh, 496 Stroker build. So in this episode, I'm going to be disassembling these heads. These are 781 castings, which are apparently some of the best oval port, uh, best heads cast iron that you can get for a GM big block. It's what came with my engine, so I'm going to use them. Um, the cost of machine work is still significantly cheaper than going with aluminum heads. I know that's quite the popular choice, but with these heads being kind of desirable, I'm just going to use them. But I also want to do a bit of porting and polishing work to these. Just nothing major, just a little bit of bowl blending and stuff. Um, truthfully, having said that, it's not something I know a lot about, so it's not something I'm really going to include in the video. Or if I do, it's not going to be from a teaching standpoint, it's just going to be a look, I'm doing it type standpoint. Reason being is um, apparently it can be, it's very finicky and sometimes a bad port polish job can be worse than no port polish job at all. But having said that, there's only one way to learn, and sometimes it's just by doing it. So I'm going to take my time. I've, um, I've poured it out cast aluminum, some of the stuff for the boat engines before, but I think these are a little more finicky. And it's all a learning curve too, but that's not going to deter me from trying anyways. I just figure if worst comes to worst, then I do just get a set of aluminum heads, right? But I'm going to teach you how to disassemble these and if your machine is to machine shops, anything like mine, hopefully it'll save you a little bit of money because I think they charge to kind of take apart as well as uh, put back together. So if we can avoid that, save you a little bit of extra cost anywhere just by doing things yourself, right? So I'm going to go over just one of them, just one pair of valves and exhaust and intake, and then I'm just going to disassemble one completely. So removing the valves and valve springs is actually a fairly simple job. It will require the right tools though. You're going to want to get a respectable valve spring compressor. We're also going to be removing the rocker studs. The reason being is because I've got push rod guides that are adjustable. That's just going to help with our valve train geometry later on in the build. So we're going to want to take those off as well. Start. Just compress the spring. Take the keepers off. Release the pressure slowly. There's one. Now we have here too the valve seal. This is called the umbrella type. It's, uh, it's fairly cheap if you're going for a budget build. But just be careful because these, uh, these won't usually fit a dual spring application. You want to take your rotator out as well. Might need a magnet for that. And it's time for the second one. So here's our intake valve. So it's considerably larger than the exhaust. Take the keepers out. Slowly release the spring. As you're setting these aside too, you're going to want to kind of keep them together. Reason being is if you plan on reusing this in your head, the guides are seated with the valves themselves. Get the seal, valve comes out. We'll not be reusing any of these in the build, so it's not super critical. Now to take the, the guide plate out. Fortunately, these are um, these are studded in; they're not press fit, so you can just get a socket on there and buzz them off. Yep, 
Easy as that. You do that for all 16 valves and your eight rockers and you're good to go. Now that we have our valves removed, we're going to want to go ahead and clean them, at least the face, just so we can mark them for reference. These aren't going to be kept for this build, but it's still good practice anyways. Clean them to get the, uh, the carbon deposits off, it's just easier for your paint pen to stick. the number this is the number eight exhaust so I'm gonna mark that accordingly the reason too you want to mark it is in case you do reuse your valve train your guides are mated with the valves some people will polish out the stem do not do that that's a terrible idea from a machinist view. All you're going to be doing is marking these and taking off material. That should be good for all we need to do. Again, this is good practice. The valves seem good shape, so maybe they'll get thrown into another build. Even marking that for reference won't matter at that point, but it's just good practice. Well, that's it for the cylinder head disassembly. That should save me some money when I take these to the machine shop. But before I do that, now I gotta do my homework, my research, and kinda think about the direction I wanna take the build for these. All my valves are just uh, stock sizes. I know for sure that I wanna go larger intake. Just trying to decide what I wanna do with the exhaust, keep it stock or, or um, upgrade that to a larger valve as well. I guess I gotta do a little more reading then I also want to do some light port polish work. That's not something I know enough about to really record to teach. So I'm gonna probably just leave that out. I know I want to do that prior to the machine shop though, just so I don't nick any, any valves or anything. I know the guides are also getting replaced. Going larger means the seats might have to be replaced if they can't be cut. I guess we'll see. But that's kind of next on my list as I wait for parts and then hopefully get that done. Uh, I've never ported anything that's cast iron, so it is a little bit nerve wracking. But you can't not do something just because you're afraid you might mess it up. That's all part of a learning curve. Um, fortunately, with the boat engines, I have had some practice with cast aluminum. And some success, actually. I've had success, so it's kind of a good direction. But I won't know until I really jump into it. But until then, I'm just, like I said, I'm going to do my own thing, ship these off to the machine shop. And the next video with the heads involved will be the reassembly, which is kind of the same step, only backwards. Might be a little bit different since I've got some different... Um, push rod guides, but more or less the same thing. All that valve train geometry kind of works with each other. So 
I'm waiting on some parts too, unfortunately. That might slow the videos down a bit, but as things happen, I'm gonna keep recording, I'm gonna keep producing. But with that, I'm gonna wrap up this episode. I know it's been shorter compared to what most of them have been, but I appreciate all the support, appreciate the likes. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna follow this build as it goes along. I'm getting excited the more stuff that gets done, and I'm just happy to share what I enjoy doing with whoever is willing to watch. Thanks again, and I guess I'll see you next episode.